Hello, my name is Jeff Odell. I live in Tampa, Florida in the United States, and this is Lesson 3 of the Introduction to Music Production course taught at Coursera.org. And for Lesson 3, I will be demonstrating pre- and post-fader sends in Ableton Live 9. When recording in a digital audio workstation, we often send part of a digital signal to a return track. This is called a send, and we do that to apply some of the signal to a sound effect, such as reverb. By doing this, we can send many signals to that track, reducing the number of effects in the overall mix and keeping the mix simpler. When we do this in a digital audio workstation, we want the effect of the fader on each individual track to affect how much of the signal is going to the return track. This is called a post fader send where the digital audio signal level is affected by the fader before it goes to the return track. The alternative is a pre fader send in which the signal stays at the same level going to the return track even when the fader is moved up and down as the signal is routed before the fader is applied. This is most common in something like a house mix where in a concert setting you don't want the house settings to affect signals going to other places like monitors or perhaps audio recording of the event and things like that. So now let's take a look at how that is set up in Ableton Live 9. Here is an Ableton Live project with a couple of pieces of audio in two different audio tracks. And we're just going to focus on this percussion track that's right here. And this percussion track already has a send associated with it, which is this reverb send down here. And this reverb send has a pretty heavy re reverb on it so that we can hear that. So let's audition that very quickly to hear what it sounds like out of the, out of the gate. All right, and you can hear a pretty good reverb on there. And if you want to hear the dry signal, let's back it off and hear what it sounds like. All right, so there's the dry signal and we add some reverb. Okay, so we're gonna leave that turned up all the way to demonstrate the pre and post fader send. So in this case, the return channel has defaulted to a post fader send. And how will we know that? Well, first of all, there's a setting here that lets us flip it from pre to post, but also our ears can tell us. So let's listen, and what I will do is I will move the fader from full on all the way to, to um, completely silent, and you'll hear the difference. As the sound of the percussion fades, the sound of the reverb fades also, and that's because it is currently in post-fader send mode. As the fader is increased and the sound level increases, in comes the reverb also. Now, if you want to know that in a more dramatic fashion, let's solo the reverb. Okay, all we're hearing now is the reverb from the percussion, nothing from the track itself. Let's go ahead and fade it. And now we're down to nothing. And come back up, and we can hear the track. That is a post-fader send setting. Now to hear the difference, let's come back and turn our track back on and switch to pre-fader. Now notice what happens. I'm gonna turn the percussion track down, but our reverb stays strong. It's getting the pre-fader signal, so the signal is not changing down to the return track. Come back with a percussion. And to demonstrate that, let's put the solo on the return track. Now all we're hearing is the reverb on the return track and reduced gain on the original track. No changes. That is a pre-fader send where the gain setting on the originating track has no effect on the reverb. In your digital audio workstation, you'll probably not use the pre-fader send too often. Its applications are more appropriate for live settings. Nonetheless, it's important to know where the settings are and how to use them so that you can assure yourself that you're getting a post-fader send if that's what you're looking for. I hope this is helpful, and thank you very much.